The Lamiaceae, the mint family, a very well-marked and distinctive family. What features depart from the primitive flower features of FENSH? Well, um, we have flower parts that are fused, that we definitely have a sympetalous corolla here with um, five petals. Here's uh, one on the top, two on the side, and two in the bottom, all fused together. We also have bilateral symmetry. Um, nice left and right halves. The symmetry of these flowers, by the way, is sometimes described as being bilabiate. Notice that it has a distinct lower lip, which is a, like a landing platform for visiting insects, and an upper lip. And just beneath the upper lip are where the stamens and the stigma are. Very strategically placed position to place pollen on the body of the visiting insect and to remove pollen from the visiting insect. But what most distinguishes, well, and and, and but what also distinguishes the, the mint family is um, square stems um, and opposite leaves. Here's a picture of a, a garden flower that's um, a type of catnip and it's um, very well illustrating the features of the mint family. We see the bilabiate corolla and we see this visiting insect that's encouraged to orient herself in a way that's conducive to transferring pollen. We also can kind of make out the square stems now that I tell you they're square, you can kind of see some angles. And the opposite, well, these are opposite parts of the inflorescence, but the leaves are also opposite. Here's a close-up of the more, um, the actual catnip that's the catnip catnip. And it's it's a weedy, wild plant. You might see it growing along, well, railroad tracks a lot. And here you can see very clearly the opposite leaves. The leaves of mint family all of them, I'm not sure about all of them, but all the ones I can think of right now are simple in complexity. They're not um, divided into leaflets. And um, they often have a nice fragrance or a strong fragrance, a minty fragrance or something also pungent. Um, another feature that distinguishes the mid family, in addition to the square stems and opposite leaves and the bilabiate corolla, is the fruit. Um, the ovary of the mint family is deeply two-lobed, and each one of the two lobes is further divided itself. So what ends up happening is that the ovary is ultimately um, four-lobed, and when it's in fruit, the fruit is four little nutlets. So if you look inside the calyx of this motherwort in fruit, um, what we see, this little, this little crosshatch jabiru, each one of these four facets is a tiny little nutlet, and that's the characteristic fruit of the mint family, four little nutlets. There are some other families of plants that have a overall growth form and calyx and corolla that um, look very much like the mint family, but their fruits are capsules, not four nutlets. So that's a very distinctive feature of the mint family, is the fruit is four nutlets. So let's take a look at some uh, flowers and fruits of the mint family. This is a lovely native wildflower called lyre-leaved sage. And on the left it's in flower. You're seeing the square stems and the opposite flowers, the leaves are the same way. And then right is a close-up-ish of the fruiting uh, calyx. Look inside the calyx and you see four nutlets, the characteristic fruit of the mint family, Lamiaceae. This is a plant called skullcap. Um, the genus is fun to recognize because the calyx, the arrow is pointing to a feature of the calyx that has a little knob or protuberance. And that is a way to recognize the genus Scutellaria. And here we can see the opposite leaves right here. And um, these flowers with this um, bilabiate corolla. And you can see the stamens um, that are ascending under the upper lip of the corolla. A lovely native wildflower. Here's... Um, Two plants that really look an awful lot alike in their overall stature, the size of their flowers, the color of their flowers, even their environment. They grow along sort of damp um, stream sides in open woods. The one on the left is called hedge nettle. Not really a nettle, though. And notice that it has a nice prominent upper lip to the corolla, which you'd expect for the Lamiaceae. Here you can see the stamens there. Um, on the right is a fairly common 
plant called American Germander. And even though it's totally a mint with this right number of petals, the upper lip is really, really short. So it's, it's as though it's obsolete. That little petal is so tiny. And so instead of having a prominent roof over the flower, uh, it seems to just have an open space. Um, and with the, with the style there. This is a Tucrium. It's American Germander. Uh, a lovely string, stream, streamside wildflower. This is a mint. It's in the genus Mentha, which is also the genus to which, um, you know, mint, like candy mint, the flavoring comes from. Here the flowers aren't zygomorphic. They're virtually radially, radially symmetric. But, you know, it's the sort of totality of characters, not an individual trait that's off here or there that's going to change the fact that it's in the mint family. Very fragrant. Nice square stems and opposite leaves. Field mint. Here's a plant called Heal All. It's um, Prunella vulgaris. Vul vulgaris means common. One of the things that's interesting about heal all, well, right off the bat, I don't think it's known to heal a lot of things. I'm not an expert in medicinal plants, but you kind of hear about what plants are used for. And I don't know, I haven't heard of heal all being used for much. Maybe it was, but it doesn't stand out. Another kind of interesting thing about Prunella is, well, you know, we've noticed that some plants are native that have been here since pre-settlement times, you know, since like time immemorial, immemorial. And other plants are introduced. They are originated from other parts of the world. Well, you know, we usually describe species as being either native or introduced. But there are some species that have both native and introduced varieties so that the species can either have individuals that, um, bel that belong to um, uh a lineage that's been here for like ever and a lineage that's that's been that's been brought over inadvertently or advertently whatever um more recently heal all has two such varieties a native variety and a introduced variety and there's some subtle differences about the shape of the leaf base i think this is the introduced variety heal all here's a lovely native wildflower called hairy wood mint blephilia ciliata um, square stems, opposite leaves. The inflorescence of the mint family it has kind of a special name. It's called the verticel. The flowers are really, really crowded into a clusters into in the axles of sort of small reduced leaves. So it's kind of like uh, a little cross between being a, a capitulum like head and sort of a, a raceme. Um, it's kind of a distinctive mint family feature. And there we see the bilabiate corollas. Lovely flower. This is a plant called obedient plant. And um, it's uh, very, very clearly a member of the mint family. Square stems, opposite leaves, bilabiate corolla. And if you were to stare down the throats of some of these at the right time of the year, like a little later than this, maybe, uh, or actually maybe this one here in the middle, um, you'd see the four nutlets. Obedient plant. It's a entertaining plant because it's called obedient plant because if you were to take one of these blossoms and push it laterally, like push it to the side of the stem, it would stay there <laughs> like it's on, on, on a metal or something. It doesn't bounce back the way you'd expect. That's why it's obedient. Hmm. Ah, this is a lovely native wildflower, very, very fragrant, that grows in prairies. It's called wild bergamot. Um, and um, lavender flowers, very fragrant. Um, a, a nice native wildflower. Well, um, we'll close with uh, the, the pattern seems to be to show some Gerargi weeds that are in the plant families. There aren't, to my knowledge, any really uh, problem weeds in natural areas in the mint family. There are a lot of um, you know, lawn weeds or garden weeds or kind of nuisance plants, not environmentally destructive so much. Um, so a fair number of our members of the mint family are non-native. This is one. This is called ground ivy, sometimes called gill over the ground, glaucoma heteracea. And it's uh, uh, a common one that we can see um, right around this time of year. So look for this in, at the edges of uh, lawns and gardens and here and there, ground ivy. So taking our cue from uh, Roger Tory Peterson. Look at the icon that Roger Tory Peterson used for the mint family. Nice. It's a square because of the square stems of the Lamiaceae.